Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Josh, your humble host, and it is my duty, my pleasure, to troll the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shiners. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, and really anything else that I think is good. I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offering, content for the blood god, and all of the show. Tonight, tonight, we have a uh, longer form content uh, than normal. So as uh, I asked my, um, my audience, um, grab something to drink, something to smoke, something to smoke. We've got an hour long ride to sit in for. This is um, The Altar Files, Lovecraftian Lore, Volume 1. Now, I know I've covered some short films from them, sprinkled throughout uh, my time here. I don't tend to do, ooh, excuse me, I don't tend to do the, uh, the long form ones um, because I prefer the smaller creators. There's tons of films out there. Uh, this is a big movie house and um, you can always go over to Alter and see everything over there for yourself. Um, but uh, I have no problem with plugging that, so. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Just took a big dab. Lovecraftian Lore, Volume back, relax, look at the void table. For it was not the Pharaoh, it was the faceless god. It was Nair Lathotep who held the key. From the Kitab al-Aziz Abdul al-Zahel read, circa 700 CE. Okay. 
The key! Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, your blood! Uh, I need more! What the fuck? Give it to me! Somebody help oh. me! Kill me! We want to kill the dog! What did you do? I, I, Kayla, I thought we need to call your aid. We need the chopper. Well, you've killed him, you guys, you idiot. No, we need the chopper. You lost your fucking mind. You thought he had a stroke. Yeah, that demons. You said that Yuri would come with the chopper when we needed to go. <laughs> and we need to go. Okay, shut up. Dude, look. There's something in here.
That was pretty good. I bet. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth was without form. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters.
deprivation. Let her out.
Yeah, that's what I picked. Yeah, okay. They, they did say out the outsider at the beginning. Yeah. I'll be right back. I gotta let her out. I know. I'm coming, baby. I got gotcha. you. I know. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. We're going. Everyone, say goodbye to Miss Aria. She's going out for the evening. Well, until she wants to come back here. She's just waiting. Uh, what? Oh, you eating a little while with everyone else. I'm sorry, sweetie girl. Right? You wanted to come back in. You followed me right back in. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> As an IT guy, you get used to problems, so I was not surprised when I got a security alert from the main server. 
Samantha was downloading suspicious files. Again. What did you do this time, Samantha? What? I didn't do anything. Okay, what did the computer do? I don't know. I'm working. Sounds like they have history. Did you download anything? What do you mean? I mean, did you download anything? Anyone sent you a file, anything Look, like I that? already told you, Gus, no. Are we done here? I really need to get back to this presentation. Yeah. But I'm gonna have to take your computer. The number one threat to corporate servers are usually the employees. They always think that the antivirus will take care of everything. The virus on Samantha's computer had quickly bypassed the outdated antivirus systems. It was bad. I even had to replace some of the hardware. I could only hope that I had it contained. My job was on the line. Uh, Gus? You wanna go for lunch? I can't, I'm busy. Oh, when you're done in here, uh, could you have a look at my computer as well? What's wrong with it? Things are never as bad as they seem. They're usually worse. What the hell? It turns out that Samantha was more devious than I thought. Her virus had somehow found its way back to the server and now the entire network was in danger. I took the usual precautions. They weren't enough. By the end of the day, half the network was infected. And management won in my head. Then, finally, deep into the night, I had an idea. Why fight something that I couldn't contain? when all I had to do was create my own closed network. Luckily for me, I had enough spare parts to build my own supercomputer and take back control. system in place, I began to search. It was just like a game hide and seek. It took some doing, but I was finally able to locate it. And when I did, I was not prepared for what I was about to see.
it. <laughs> nice. Have you ever had one of those days where it seems like everything goes wrong? You try and try, but no matter what you do, things just don't work out. I'm having one right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, at least you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. Richard Pickman, and today we're going to learn how to catch the dark overtones of the soul using my three-part model. So, do you have your sketchbooks ready? That's okay. I'll wait. You'll get that when everybody else is. Ready? Great. Now let this three-time county chili cook-off champion and visionary artist help you capture the actual anatomy of the terrible. Plus, the added bonus that following my artistic model will change your life, irrevocably, forever. Don't believe me. Just listen to all this testimony for the Pikmin model. Pikmin? That artist who only paints monsters and ghouls rending flesh? Ha! <laughs> Ghastly work. Carrion and viscera have no place on the hollowed walls of the home. That is reserved for portraits of beloved ancestors or portraits of beloved cats. Isn't that right, Joseph Perwin? We kicked him out of art club ages ago. No gallery would show his work. No museum would take his work. No patron would buy his work. There's a possum down at the zoo that finger paints that has more of an artistic career than Pikmin. <laughs> no, no, but the, the paintings themselves do have their merits. I mean, the possum. 
<sighs> Pikmin's work is unsettling at best. I saw one of Pikmin's paintings. I I saw. I saw. I saw what I. I... <sighs> <coughs> Painting as art in 2018. How pedestrian. Um. Magnifique. Pickman is a genius. In my impartial, totally unbiased opinion, he is the <laughs> world's greatest living artist. So what will you need to follow the Pikmin model? Step one is preparation. You're going to need a canvas. You'll need a few pencils for the initial sketch and an assortment of brushes. Pick what's comfortable for you. You will need paint. For what I'll be showing you today, you will need grays and black. Oh, and red. Lots of red. You're also going to need the key to the padlock door in the back of your cellar that's always chilled your bowels at the mere thought of it. And because this kind of art can be unpredictable, you're going to want a few drop cloths and some additional measures. And now for stage two of the Pikmin model. Inspiration. But what if you don't have a subterranean door that opens on the world's ghastly secrets? That's okay. <laughs> we can send you the Pikmin Home Art Kit, which has all the creative inspiration you need. And more. Regrettably, so much more. You're also going to need an assistant. Hi? What, what am I doing? Inspiration, my friend. Now, put on this inspiration vest. Good. I'll just, uh, peer into that. I also recommend a camera. I find it easier to draw from a photograph as opposed to memory alone. You can get some deeper realism that way. And now we reach the third and final step of the Pikmin model. Transcription. Use your reference material, or the nightmarish images forever burned into your brain, and apply paint to canvas to present a grisly tableau. There I you know, go. I know, I know. gotta wait, I gotta wait. So, why use the Pikmin model? Long ago, I decided that one must paint terror as well as beauty from life. Otherwise, you aren't capturing the full picture. The world is more than just the glowing conventions of beauty recognized by our media and our loins. It isn't just light, it's darkness too. And the dark scares people because most have no idea what lurks in them. But for those of us who travel through the shadows, pass through these weird regions, we can report back, creating works of art to break people from the myopic prisons of perceived safety and sanity. To remind them that the this world is more. It's mysterious and astounding and, yes, monstrous because, yes, there are monsters. We can remind them of the sublimity of their world and never let them. Yes. So join me, because you must on the artistic journey to escape the commonplace and explore the wonder and terror that will consume our sanity, and one day, our very lives. That was good. Hell yeah.
how much snow do we got coming our way? Looks like a blip. I've got nothing here. This place is abandoned? Definitely. I've swept this area tons of times. It's a ghost. A blip? Sorry, buddy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get the power on. Honestly, though, the storm's not supposed to be here. I've got nothing on my system. This place looks pretty old. Wasn't it on the system anymore? Decommissioned facility coordinates are almost always for tape. I found this on a random sweep. Find some things, Valley. Right on. All right, let's strip it down. They look super old. And already picked her. I do have a Call of Cthulhu game that um, that I should look at um, at some point. It's the best one that uh, I, it's the one that everyone recommends that you play. <laughs> it should warm up in here now. We got power. Yeah, go ahead. You should come down to the lowest level. I found something. What? Uh-oh. Just come see for yourself. Uh-oh. How are we looking? Besides the weather, we're all clear. This is probably why this place is not good to go. We found something. Like what? Something good? No. Something really fucking weird. Like a carving. Can I come see it? Uh, let's just find the manifest and mind what we can from this place. Let's stay put for now. Nope, I want to see this weird thing. Is it an artifact? Something. I doubt it. Mark, you coming? Uh, I'll be right out. Uh-oh.
you go get work. Go get it fixed. Go stay work. See you soon. Gareth, get your asses up here now. Come on, guys. Come on. Bon is dead. I killed him. It's only a matter of time before him. It doesn't matter now. Vous entendez le son de ma voix. 
Vous êtes maintenant profondément détendu et endormi. Alors, essayez de vous plonger dans un souvenir très ancien. Que voyez-vous Je vois une route qui défile. Il fait nuit et il fait très froid. Qu'éprouvez-vous à cet instant Je suis fatiguée et j'ai peur. Je marche dans la rue et il fait sombre. Mais je peux quand même lire le nom de la rue, c'est la rue du dragon. J'ai l'impression que quelque chose me suit. Alors, passez un souvenir plus heureux. Que voyez-vous J'ai reçu un paquet dans ma boîte aux lettres. Je suis curieuse et excitée parce qu'il y a un vieux livre à l'intérieur. Ouvrez ce livre, que voyez-vous Je vois des dessins étranges et des textes dont je ne comprends pas trop le sens. Et ça me met un peu mal à l'aise. Le titre est illisible oh, sur la couverture. Ensuite, je suis dans une forêt. Et je vois un symbole étrange. Oh, no, we're gonna be doing Baldur's Gate 3 after this. J'ai l'impression que je perds la tête en I regardant et que je deviens folle. Que voyez-vous d'autre J'ai une cassette VHS dans les mains. Je la regarde sur une télé. Mais... Mais ce que je vois, Mais ce que je vois me... me fait peur. Il, re... Il revient tous les 30 ans, ravager la terre, puis il repart. Calmez-vous. Calmez-vous. Respirez, respirez. Voilà. Alors, euh, nous allons passer à un souvenir plus marquant. Quel est le souvenir le plus marquant que vous ayez Pouvez-vous me dire quand était-ce Je suis dans les années 80 et je regarde... Je regarde les infos à la télé. Il part de la guerre Iran-Irak qui a fait plus d'un million de morts. Euh, ce n'est pas possible. Vous n'étiez pas encore né. Euh, Peut-être êtes-vous en train de regarder une retransmission d'un journal télévisé non, 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 je suis sûre que c'est... Je suis sûre que c'est pas une retransmission parce que... Je peux me voir dans le reflet du miroir. Mais c'est quelqu'un d'autre. C'est pas moi, mais... Mais c'est moi. Et c'est le jour de ma mort. Continuez. On se... Ensuite, je suis dans un couloir sombre devant une porte. Je, je m'apprête à... à ouvrir la porte, mais, mais j'ai l'impression que... que je perds la tête. J'ai les poils qui se dressent. J'ouvre je... Je... la porte et je vois... Je vois... Je vois... À la fois maître de l'espace-temps et la porte vers d'autres dimensions. Et je suis sa clé. Files Lovecraftian Lore Volume 1. It was really good. Hope you enjoyed. Um, we're going to um, take a short break so I can feed the cats um, and um, I have food on the way. So let me put some. Um, music on.
and um, I will be getting back to Fallout 4, but um, I'm um, I'm fairly keen on waiting uh, for a, a couple of things to drop, like Fallout London and Fallout 76 is a new thing. Uh, and I sincerely wanted to play a brand new game, something that I could really sink my teeth in, hence we're doing Baldur's Gate 3. Um, and it's a, it's a game where I can, like, um, you know, it's an open type game, not open world, but necessarily, but like, um, like it's a choice filled game. Um, and I'm here for it. I, I know, baby. I know. I know. Excuse me. I'll be back. Uh, me. Hear how loud she is? She's the bossiest boss I've ever had. joining me for uh, Lovecraftian Lore Volume 1 from Alter. Like, subscribe, and share. Uh, be safe, happy, and healthy. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. I cannot lose my mouse there.